We are here for our policy meeting. 501, I have called the meeting to order. Thank you. Review of the minutes from 10 6 21. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. So, our first policy, which is one that we had last time that we were bringing back, we were just waiting on some, some clarification, is BBBE vacancies on unexpired term fulfillment. Thank you. And I did share at the last board meeting because I got confused what was in and what was out that the uh, um, the the Paul the law did change. So I looked it up for Tammy's request, called Will, and um, there was an update to the law. And at this time, the at-large member would sit on the uh, um, the committee. It was a relatively recent change. So Will Will said. He's always so will, will Will is so proud of us, right? Will Phillips, the guy at NHSBA that runs the policies. He's like, you guys are so on top of it, just makes it worth it. Because it's a lot of work for him to go through all that and write it all up. And a lot of places don't do what we do. Like we do a lot to adopt these and, and get it right. Mm -hmm. So that was a good one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me check, Danny. Well, I'm very happy to hear that yes. as the at large member. <laughs> yes. And I'm glad we got it cleared up before it's a problem, right? Like it's better to do it proactively and have they, they have they I don't think they've updated the RSAs on the state website because I did go on yeah. to check that before I our last meeting and it, the last revision was from 2017, I think. Yeah, no, it was, I think it was 2021 that it changed. Um, so they must not have done it yet. Everyone's so like low staff from COVID that I bet everything's just behind. But that makes it really hard because we're supposed to follow laws and we need to have access to them. Right? Yeah. Can I ask a question on BBB? E? B? B? E? Mm -hmm. e? Yes. Number two. B number two. B number two. Vacancy of any other, any office other than school board, budget committee, or moderator. What would that include? Treasurer? And clerk. And, and clerk. clerk. Okay. I was just curious. And I suppose if down the road the board were to create any other sort of committee that for which you needed to have people elected, then I guess that would fit in there too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions on this policy? Would you like to make a motion to move to first and second read? Move to move it to the board. Second. Okay. All in favor? Our second policy is ILEAA, our new high school graduation competencies. We also brought this back and invited Mr. Staff. To answer some questions that we had. Perfect. I was just looking for some. I think so. I didn't have a list, so our questions were: How are we defining mass competent? Uh, Mastery. I think we were like that's a pretty broad. Right. Statement. Yes. Yes. That yep. was So basically. right now, we define mastery at the high school level as basic proficient. I guess I'll go on to you because to me, basic proficient is not a high level of demonstrative. Correct. So well, so well. Let me. All right. Let me back up. Let me rephrase that. We are we award credit for basic proficiency. I don't think that we would consider that mastery or proficiency okay. of the content, right? So let me let me revise my statement. So mastery. So this comes right out of the law. There's nothing. Everything that you see here, one, two, three, and four, literally comes out of the 306 law 
word for word. Um, so we interpret that in other policies, but I think they're just defining here what it would mean generically. Yeah, it was just confusing because this says mastery at a high level of demonstrated proficiency. And then the next sentence after that is course credit will be awarded through the demonstration of student's mastery of the competencies of the course. So that's where there's confusion about basic proficiency versus mastery. Yep. Yep. Which is why you're here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it makes perfect sense. That's so I'm glad you brought that up. So, I mean, I guess when I look at this sentence, so I'm looking at the sentence after number four, course credit will be awarded through the demonstration of a student's mastery. So I almost feel like here we may want to insert a table as to what that looks like for our high school because we will award credit, well, unless we don't want to, we will award credit for a basic proficiency unless we want to take that up and look at that and move that needle a little bit further, which I'm not opposed to doing. What's the, it. is it right now a number wise? Yeah, I think you finished. Yeah. <laughs> so two for those purposes. At one point, wasn't it higher, but then didn't we drop it back down? No, it was 1.5 when we got here and we raised it to two. That's right. I was not happy about that. <laughs> Yeah, it was 1.5. Yeah, no, right. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it was always, yeah, it was always part of the plan to move yeah. it up, right? So, right. I think first, I think we have to just look at some kids' educational abilities. Like the two is is good for them. Like right. you know, like, like right. we, right. I, I agree, it needs to be higher than a 1.5. But like right. a, a two, three, and four, we're looking A, B, and C type. And mastery really is subjective when you're talking high level demonstrative based on the ability of the student. Well, that's the key. So the, the, there's the, the what the district did prior to my arrival was they made the decision to have 1.5 be the, the level because they felt that that was attainable by the vast majority of students. I, I came in and we worked together and figured that, well, if we go to two, but if students need accommodations, that'd be a part of an IEP, mm -hmm. right. right? That That we need to kind of, I I was really still, and I'm still feeling like 2.5 would be the way to go, right? We're just, what is it two? we got, we got waylaid by the pandemic in this conversation, but we had just moved it up to a two. If you remember for the graduation of the pandemic, the first four months, March of 2019, we had to go back to a 1.5 because it was just too much to switch it in the middle of all that. So the next year we held the bar. We stayed at two, even though we were still doing remote and all kinds of, so what would a 2.5 be? Well, it's complicated because it's really, it's, a lot of this is about what you attach the okay. meaning. So the new table that is being presented in how we now correlate those numbers to letter grade. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have, I, I'm sure if I dig through, I can find that table that Patty sent us, but do either one of you have that? Hold on, I'll put it that right up to the policy in it, just a second so you can see it. Because I know she kind of. I like, yeah, I like that you added that for our Yeah, I love that. Right, well, that's the thing. Like, you guys see it through a different lens than I do. So these are questions I haven't thought of because when you read it, you just read it the same way all the time. Well, we read it through edu speak. Right, you read it through parent you interpretation right. speak, which is way better. Or parent that's more speak, important. or edu speak, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we like parent better. because The goal is to know what the kid needs to know and be able to do, and how you can help them do it for, as a parent. Uh, I'm just throwing this in there for now. I'm not saying we would keep this, but just right, so you right, can right, see right. it. What the actual table is that we're working on right now. So a C, a C plus would be a two based on how it and i feel like as someone who works with a lot of um kids on iups like i feel like the c is like, like it's not great but i think it's where like some kids that's just where they're gonna be right so b minus to c plus if you were to move it to it so it would be basically if you move it to 2.5 it would be a b minus if you leave it at a 2.0 actually 2.0 is really just a c mm -hmm. So think of it this way. Yeah. If you think of it, if you think of it, just just take let's take a think of the letters yeah. as um, below a C, you definitely need more work. Mm -hmm. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. You get a C, you can do it, but you might not be able to apply it. Mm -hmm. 
right? So you understand it, you understand the basics of it. I think of a B as you can apply it, and a C is not only, I mean, an A is you can apply it, and you can also teach it to someone else. You, you are able to, like, use that skill and adapt it and transfer it. And that's a mastery. That's right. right. I think of an, of a, an A or an E exemplary as transference, mm -hmm. right? Transference and application versus um, constant repetition and, and the ability to utilize. It's like Brian said with the parking. You can get in. I love the parking one. I thought that was perfect, mm -hmm. right? You can play a piece of music and it sounds pretty good. That's a C. A, a, a B is you play a piece of music and it's beautiful. And you can do it every time the same way, right? An A is you play it and people feel feelings because it's so like alive, mm -hmm. right? It's like at the level of art. Mm -hmm. That's the way I think of it. I have to put it through my own lens of music, you know? So how about what I did in red? Oh, he's actually over there doing like work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's not just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who said it. No, I, 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 I talk and he talk at the same time. time. Cool. I'm the same, like, I'm the same way. I type on. Yeah. Yeah, so if you can, if that makes it clearer, that would be one way to go about it. I think it definitely makes it clearer. I definitely, I think that we should keep the, the table in there. I, oh, I like it, yeah. Yeah. And I like the student's level of mastery and then credit will be awarded for 2.0 or higher. And that makes it really clear, like you have to get at least a, a yeah. 2.0. So you, if you think back to the evolution of this, when we first went to this system, we were coming from a system where passing passing grade was a 65. So we were thinking about what we're going to define credit as. And of course, people in the room predominantly wanted it to be an 80, right? A B. And that was going to be a heavy lift, I think, for some of the kids that you talk about mm -hmm. that are just not going to be able to perform at that level. And so it was decided for the time being, we would go less than that and we could revisit later down the road. So that was where the logic of the 1.5 started versus the two or the 2.5. Okay. You know, two is better than where we're at. It may not be where we need to be long term, but at least from here, you can see that's the top end of the C range mm -hmm. going into the C plus range. I do think once the, the, the intervention really in the math and the reading, I think we could move to a 2.5. I think sure. that's, I think that's yeah. really realistic. Yeah. But I think we're, especially with the COVID learning loss and where we are, I think staying at a two mm -hmm. makes the most sense. Yep. I know I'm not an obvious opinion. No, it's okay though, because policies and ISA and look, it, it's like I said, it's all symbiotic. It's a web. It's not necessarily that one thing operates separate of another, mm -hmm. right? And Heather, I think that, that that's going to tie into the conversation this evening about intervention, right? Are there any other questions or any other changes we feel are needed? I put a little note at the bottom. The NHSBA put a note May of 2014, and I thought, well, we ought to take that out before we adopt. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of, I can just delete it now, but I just didn't want to change something without saying. Yeah. Okay. So it's required now. So I'll take it out. Yeah. Okay. Good. See, Dawn, I was working while I was talking. <laughs> I just have to. I know, you have to rub it in. Yeah. My job. Tammy thinks that she just doesn't say it. Hmm. It's okay, Tammy, I'll say it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that was really the. That was it? I think that was really the biggest piece, which Perfect. was that mastery, <clears throat> just not understanding exactly what that meant. So I think this makes a huge difference. And Good. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I know you've got that was better places to be. No, I'm here. I'm here oh, for the board right. meeting anyway. Yeah, so and I'd like you to stay for the the um the academic freedom policy if you don't mind because right. I think it's really good yeah. for you to hear what Brian's thinking and seeing in his school. Mm -hmm. Great. Would we like to make make a motion to bring it to the board? Second. Second. And. 
And all in favor? And then our next policy is JLCJA. It's a new policy, emergency plans for sports related injuries and additional protocols for athletic participation. So is this a, a new law or? I don't know. I just, they take the laws and they update the policies based on the, um, the laws so will just sends us oh, and this was a, yeah, it it's like a new it's, policy and it was a priority yeah yeah so everything above a is is stuff that you would take out before you adopt the policy but definitely looks like there needs to be a an emergency plan that was put into policy Do we have that already? A sports injury emergency action plan? No, because it's not due until July, uh, August 1st of 2022. But we don't have anything that we're operating on. Well, we or operate on it. Well, yeah, we have we have procedures. Yeah, things like that. Bob's, it's not going to be heavy lift for Bob to write this, but I think there are places that didn't, and Bob will just kind of guide us through this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've always had we always we have a plan in terms of there's an injury. It gets reported, the trainer's there, the trainer assesses, the nurse assesses. Mm -hmm. If it's a depending on what it is, and then the plan takes different paths, right? So it could be consultation with a doctor, it could be that there's a concussion protocol that has to go into place, mm -hmm. which then produces return to learn plans, return to play plans. Right. Um, it, it could be consultation with the insurance company if there was an injury that happened that has to be reported to the insurance company, but I don't think it was, it was never a policy what that plan was going to look like. I think unfortunately a lot of kids, there's been like deaths and injuries of kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember I, I had one three years ago. I, I bumped my head snow right. oh. and I've never experienced anything like that for six weeks. I was miserable. It was thing. awful. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think what happens here, what this policy is really saying is it's, it's requiring at a minimum that these are the different areas that the plan has to uh, cover. And I think most of these are already covered in ours, but if there's anything missing, that'll be something that Bob could update so that we have that information. I do know that Mr. Dawson had created a, a COVID plan because mm -hmm. of the heart issues. I don't know if that's something that we would need to add to this. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Well, I mean, there's the, card, the cardiac the injury. Your diagnosis is might cover that. Oh, okay. To be is already there, so I think okay. that would be yeah. covered. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, we've been pretty proactive with this stuff, to be honest with you. I mean, probably five or six years ago, we did, the, we did a lot of work with concussions because we had a very, very solid plan for sports concussions. Yes. We didn't have a plan at all for non-sports related concussions. Mm -hmm. And we have kids for the tripping and falling yeah. all over the place right. outside of sports and they're coming in and we're hearing about it haphazardly and there's no plans put in place or was, there were no plans put in place for kids for non-sports related injuries. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, to me, Whatever plan we come up with, yes, we could. I know the policy says for sports related injuries, we would use it for all related injuries, quite honestly. Any other questions or discussion? This one isn't ready to go to the board yet, though, right? You got it. Well, it will be if you take out all the, take out all the yellow stuff. Right. So Phyllis will have to take out the yellow things and fill in the in consultation with. No, I think yeah, the park stays. Bob's gonna. I'm gonna. I just emailed Bob and asked him to take another look at it for because it doesn't go to the board for two weeks, right? So we'll make sure to clean it up. So I'll tag. I'll put the plus sign for Phyllis and say, hey, can you you know let's make sure we yeah. get this one ready. We try to send them to the board by early next week so they have a full week to read them if possible if there are any big tweaks. Heather, I just want to make sure I know we're going in order, but I want to make sure that we get the 
-hmm. divisive concepts policy for the board vote that it was going to be discussed or the academic freedom. Would the board be, I mean, would, would the uh, committee be okay with skipping the other two and going up to the divisive? And if we have time, the, uh, the bus conduct rules, is that a time sensitive one? Um, no, it just needs to get done if we can, okay. right? Yeah, I mean, the bus rules one is pretty straight ahead. I just didn't want to get too far, you know. The two that they go together. Yeah. yeah we we, are, we, are we ready to move this to the board? I was confused because you said you wanted Mr. Dawson to look at it. So I didn't oh, only only in consultation before it goes to the board. It's okay. fine. It's fine. I just want to, I just emailed him and said, hey, heads up, this one's moving forward to the board. If there's any okay. tweaking, let's okay. get it ready for the board. Okay. Then I move the JLCJA goes to the board. Or could be first and second or first? Uh, first, first, first is probably first, fine. Second. All in favor? So, do we want to skip to the last one? So, we are going to go to IV, the new academic freedom and divisive concepts. So I'll give you the, the background on the of what happened since the last school board meeting. So um, I drafted a policy that had, as I said at the school board meeting, um, there's policies aren't usually just a rogue copying of a law into a policy and saying, this is now a policy. You have to follow the law. The goal of the policy is to say, this is what the law is in practice in the school. This is how you do it, right? This is the work that you do. And I think that, that, that Mr. Fitzpatrick made a good point that there are some very clear actions for the schools to take in the law. So I started out by just pasting the law in because I just, that's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote all this stuff in there about what to do. And I sent it to Will Phillips, Barrett Christina, the two guys at the NHSBA and Jim O'Shaughnessy. They all emailed me back and said, take out all of this. <laughs> They're like, it's way too much. It doesn't help your practitioners do the work. Conversely, there were the things that are in there that were kept, they felt were really helpful and it'd probably be a model policy for other districts. Mm -hmm. So they were super positive about the work that I was doing. They just did what most people tell me, which is to pare it down because it's too much, mm -hmm. which I, I get that feedback. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a joke. Um, but I, I did, I did, you know, they, they said that the, the reality is, is that in the law, CRT is never mentioned. In the law, um, um, white shaming or any of those topics that people are anxious about, that's not in the law. Right. The, the, that's something that we'll address at the district level. So they wanted me to focus on what is academic freedom? How does academic freedom work? And how does this new law change what happens in a classroom what we want to do is make it so that people know what to do in the classroom so that and, and truly the goal was to develop a policy that makes teachers feel like i know what to do because that's the purpose of the policy mm -hmm. so and and the truth is, is that all four of those prongs that are in there those are right out of the law so i think that's yeah. what mr fitzpatrick wanted from the law to be in there that's the most important part and i i wrote the part that said if you don't if you do these things there's going to be a problem Right, and I wanted that to be really abundantly clear. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, and I mean, as far as how it plays out, it, it's different at different levels. I think the, the struggle at the high school level is the kids are at an age where they're really exploring their thoughts, their beliefs. Mm -hmm. They wanna think through things, they wanna talk about things, they wanna challenge things. And I think that's where it gets tricky. Right, so our teachers want guardrails so that they know where they can operate and where they can't. And I think the vast majority of our teachers, they wanna teach kids how to think, not what to think. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's truly what they want. I think where we get caught, and I definitely see it like fielding the, the parent emails or the parent phone calls, the parent, it's like a game of telephone, right? The parents get their child's version of the story, which is usually, oh my gosh, mom, I can't believe what we were talking about today in class. We were talking about X. What do you mean you were talking about X? Yeah, we were learning that X, Y, Z. And so now the parent, if, if 
that's something that they don't feel is appropriate, they're, they're questioning it. And, and I think a lot of times what happens is a conversation starts as a neutral conversation where kids can explore a topic. Kids start exploring the topic, having a discussion, taking sides, making statements, and that's, those are the narratives that start to go home. The teacher let these things happen in the classroom. Well, maybe they did, maybe they were talking about it, right? But was it, but was it something that fits into these four buckets or was it that the teacher was teaching kids how to think and what to think? That's where I think we draw the line in the sand. So, which, you know, which it's from a philosophical perspective, Brian and I have talked at length since I've known him, we don't have a problem with saying that you can't teach people what to think. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the key right. to this policy you, you is making that clear to the staff member that we may not even know yet. Right. In the future. Right. Who right. does that without consent and having something to fall back on to address it if it right. does happen. Exactly. Right. Right. I don't want anyone being told what to think. That is unacceptable. Right. Right. Points of view is totally necessary. Right. It's and hard. I, and I think certain topics it's easier to see where the line is than other topics, right? There's no doubt. So that's why I think having something like this ultimately is helpful for staff because not having a policy leaves them completely wide open for scrutiny, complaints, action taken against them, let's say. So, and a large part of those, the other items that are in here come from, so we had Drummond and Woodson provide training for our staff in staff meetings this fall on this topic. And what I did was I took information from the slides from their training and helped use some of that to craft the policy. So it's a combination of the law, the training from Drummond and Woodson, and input from Jim, uh, Will, and Barry. Yeah. So I don't know what questions you guys have, because we live it every day. You yeah. guys see it through a different lens and maybe not to the same degree that we do. So my couple of things is just some wording. So teachers should be accurate. I think people are going to be like accurate by whose standards? Right. Like my idea of history accuracy may be different than somebody else's. Like I know his like yeah. history shouldn't be subjective, but we all know that history is subjective. Um, you know you're on this committee now, right? <laughs> you just <laughs> bought a one-way ticket to policy <laughs> this year. Um, with, yeah. with that word? Actually, oh, so the second paragraph, teachers should be, fact, should be accurate, exercise appropriate restraint, show respect for opinions of others, and, and at all times comply with the board policy. Could you say accurate with regard to the teaching of facts, or should it be factually accurate? I'm fine with either way. I'm just wondering what reads better. Yeah, like I just think there needs to be something about with facts. I don't have edit rights. That's why you see me. Just oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I can. I don't mind just being a suggester. I'm um, done. Or Tammy, I don't know. I'm just. I'm just thinking accurate, like. I feel like it could be some sort of subjective accurate. Uh, okay, let me blow this one over just a little bit, and I'm not going to make it take an hour, but I just want to say facts are accurate at the time they're taught. They may change just a week later with ongoing mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. This is the doctorate nerd coming out. No, right? I agree. Like we, we have, we understand the Holocaust as we understand it today. But if there's a discovery in some place in Germany that we don't know about that changes that fact, it changes the way we teach it in the future. And that's why we have to be careful not to box teachers in. Because mm -hmm. they have to teach the facts as they know them at the time. I don't think that's what, I mean, I guess I, I would have interpreted your comment more as, you know, well, I'm teaching that this is, well, this it kind of is blue, but it kind of. I would argue that that's teal. It might not. Well, that's, that's the thing. Like, I'm accurate in saying that I think this is blue. Yeah. So there are facts, and then there are yeah. facts. You know, your it's, facts. Like, it's more about, like, because I think when people think 
I'm just thinking about people's belief system. This is such a like divisive, you right. know, like topic. What a lot of these people, what people are referring to when we say accurate, like we, I just don't know if accurate is the correct word we should use because my accuracy might be different than right. yours. Like, I, yeah, I don't like the word accuracy for that reason. So how about if you say teachers should focus on facts, exercise appropriate restraint? Is it is that is that the right way to go? I mean, how do you define appropriate? I mean, that's the problem is that like the policy is addressing something that's super, super hard to address. Well, what's another synonym synonym for accurate? Cinnamon? Cinnamon, <laughs> sorry, cinnamon. Not, not kindergarten, you can say cinnamon, it's okay. I like cinnamon. Um, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't say Correct, well. precise, exact, right, errorless. How about teachers? teachers? Teachers should specific teach the facts as accurately as possible. Or should should provide instruction of the facts as we know them at the date. I don't know. That's too yeah. pretty wordy. Oops, I said that a lot. That's that's bad. That's too long. Teachers should focus on. It's objectivity is what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Isn't it? Like we want, like we want the teachers to be able to teach like about the Holocaust and the encompass of it, you know, from all different points of view. Yeah. But there's going to be different facts. Like right. Holocaust deniers say the Holocaust didn't happen. That's accurate and factual to them. Yeah. But to me, who like minor, I know that it did happen. You know right. what I mean? So it's, so that's kind of where I'm getting like tripped up. Does that make sense? Or am I overthinking this? I like what Brian just wrote. Base instruction on facts. Fact, facts, exercise. I, I like that. Yeah, I think it's true. On maybe factual curriculum or factual instruction. I think it's okay to just say facts okay. because sometimes it's curriculum and sometimes it's new information that's come in that, that is supplementary to the okay. curriculum and is appropriate. And there's okay. It's hard because public schools are really unique that we hire a lot of professionals to teach. And the definition of professional is one who makes decisions based on sound principles when things are gray. A doctor makes decisions based on very difficult circumstances when things are gray. Lawyers do the same thing. Well, teachers have to do it all day long. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to legislate professional practice. Mm -hmm. Super tricky. So right? just for the whole advocate here, because I know that this is going to come up when I go to the board. Um, because you can find facts anywhere yep. to support anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so should it maybe say something, you should base instruction on well-documented facts or something to that effect that they're research based research based research facts because i know i agree with you facts because it, it's it, that's still very subjective yeah you can find facts that the holocaust didn't exist right or you can find research for almost anything yeah. exactly so okay that's why it's based and i don't know if that's even the right I don't word know if that's the right word because new information it's, doesn't have research tied right. to it necessarily right. Well, you say that Pluto's not a planet, so well, I'm just sitting there, maybe, <laughs> but Pluto is a planet, poor Pluto. Right. On widely accepted facts. All right. I think we're gonna get caught in the yeah, weeds quickly, gonna, yeah, no matter what. Time. I got it. Here's the I got it. The more words you add, yeah, I know. the more you box people yeah. in. Teachers yeah. should base instruction on research. If you if, if you say to me, if I come to you and I say, David's my eighth grader, Heather, you taught David X, Y, and Z about the Holocaust. Where do you get that from? I want to know the, what the research is behind what you told my son. Mm -hmm. If you can't answer that, you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, except that implies that, I don't know, 
everything has to come from a research. Study. No, but but like if you have if you have a textbook that you're following or a curriculum, there should be research that backs up that curriculum. You can't you can't just I mean, maybe it's too far, but I'm just saying that like it can't just be willy nilly. I mean, we can go back. I mean, I don't know if I opened a can of worms. No, you did, but it's it's this is. You did. Welcome we to my world. We were going to go there anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about based on facts? Um, I don't remember what it said originally. By research. You said accurate. Too much. Teacher should base instruction. I want to phone a friend and call Will Phillips and ask him why they put the original statement right. the accurate. Teacher should base instruction. That was the original policy was academic freedom from the HSDA. Oh. They they did issue a policy on this. They did, and they they put the the first. It was in the fault the folder, but I hadn't gotten to it yet. So it was in the folder, um, and they just had the four things in there. They didn't have the rest of the. I kind of like mushed it all together to make one policy. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess my question is, if they used it, would do we want to go back to it so that it's uniform across other districts? I, I think that the the intention of the term accurate is to kind of say that. Teachers shouldn't just be willy nilly throwing things in randomly, but it's a really, it's a hard thing. I mean, if you want, what we can do is we can put it back to the way it was and I can just email Will and ask, what did you mean by accurate and how do you define that? Because my board is probably going to ask. Right. Then I can yeah, email I you guys. I can email you all. If you like the answer and you feel like we can move forward, we move it forward. If not, we just bring it back to the next meeting. Right? So it's okay to kind of... Mm -hmm. These things need to be adopted, but it's not like there's no real emergency. I mean, we have to follow what's currently adopted. <laughs> well, I'm, I saved the uh, saved um, accurate. It's just that, and then what we'll do is put. This as a comment for now. We don't lose it. I did see. Or they make undo buttons. I did see a, a note that um, I don't know if it was Diana, but saying teaching this or um, Mr. Yeah, Jackson. she wanted to change the language of the law, and I checked no. Okay. I, I clicked okay. it off. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I went through there, like um, Bob wanted to change the discrimination, and I'm like, no, that's O'Shaughnessy's. I know who wrote what in there, so right, I'm like, right, just right. I can remember. Right. Mm -hmm. I love Bob, but I'm not going to nix Jim's thinking on this because he lives it all day long. See, so yeah, you know what? Here's the thing with accurate. The word accurate. Go down to the bottom of the first page. I think that spells out a little bit further when they talk about employees oh, yeah. are permitted to discuss historical existence of facts, topics, and subjects identified in RSA 193.40. Including the prohibited concepts. We're also yeah. permitted to teach about the existence of racism. Okay. Okay. Any other questions in this session? So policy GBI has to also be adopted in conjunction with this yes. according to the no at the bottom here. Yes. Is that that it wasn't exactly on the agenda, but do we need to talk about that one too? Um we can or we can do it at the next agenda. It just needs to be done eventually. It is in the folder. It says we do not have I do not have access. Oh. Oh, I had to request access. I'm those. sorry. I'll, I'll the other that. day, actually, yeah. Yeah, you just want to do it now and find with that because it is late. I think it's a pretty straightforward policy, honestly. I don't think there's <laughs> straightforward, but not always followed. Well, 
I can tell you that from personal experience. <clears throat> Specific personal experience. Really? Yeah. When I when when I was the first time I ran for the board in yeah. 2017, yeah. acting principal at the Memorial School. I remember that. Sent out a news. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yep, yep. and specifically, you know, referencing my opponent and Jim Baker's also, and yep. how wonderful they were for the school. Mm -hmm. It went to the attorney general, and then mm -hmm. he ruled that we. You know, that was a lesson sure. here, but they it was failed, right, right when I was fired. to, you know, pursue it as a misdemeanor. Or yeah. But yeah. yeah, it happens. Sure. So, so yeah, straightforward, but necessary. Although I would have thought we would have had this already, actually. Well, I mean, it's part of the code of conduct, correct? For yeah. Exactly. It's part of the code of conduct. It's just spelling yeah. out in the policy. Right. Okay. Now, I like the policy when I got the sample. I thought it was good. You guys need a minute to read it? Yeah, I just got in. Yeah. So. Does anyone mind if I eat a bagel while I wait? Because I'm going to get okay. super hungry. Well, I, I realize every night I'm driving home after these meetings and nothing's open. So I get back to Saco and I'm sorry. Yeah. That is, I don't eat like fast food. Thank you. Right, so that the educator code of conduct is referenced at the bottom of the policy. And that's where I think the gray area, that, that's where it, you know, when you're acting as an employee versus if you're going to act as an individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just for the record, Tammy, that happened right before I was fired. Oh, I know. And when yeah. I got, no, but when I got here, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm owning it that like that was. My amazing. sister's a teacher in Idaho. And she couldn't believe it. Yeah. She was, and she's a, she's a new teacher. She, yeah, she, she started teaching later yeah. in life, but um, she was she was she was shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows. Everybody knows that you know they don't, don't do that. I don't remember who that interim principal was. I don't remember the words. Oh, it was the interim, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Was, yeah. But she was not like <laughs> inexperienced. She was interim because she was pulled, you know, like she had, she had, was experienced. Right. She was retired. She was not there. I, never met I can tell you she was never there. Right. That's why the fact that I can't even remember her name. Like, tells I know, me something, I know right? Mr. B wouldn't have done it, and I know Patty wouldn't have done it. No. No, it was definitely a rogue thing. Yeah, it was so not. When yeah. Mr. Um, Mr. B left. Uh, yes. Yeah. No, no one ever met her. Like she never came to anything. She was never like Mrs. Johnson right. in the school. Well, sorry for my attitude. But no, I no. <laughs> listen, I don't. I don't blame you. This is why, like, it was, my it was own traumatic. personal practice has always been that you stay in a very simple lane. Get out and vote. Make your vote heard. Here are the times and places for the polling locations. Short, yeah. sweet, to the point. Literally, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's that's as far as you ever want to go. Yeah, but I always I say to people like, right? You have two, you get paid two hours to go to vote. Make sure you vote at the beginning of the day, end of the day. I don't really care. Just make sure you go out and vote. Mm -hmm. It seems straightforward to me. I don't. I like it. Is this already on? This is already on the books. No, I don't think so. Well, it's got a, it's got an original effective date, so that's it's got to be. So what? So the only thing that's been changed is really just what's in bold. Oh, you're right. So this is already on the books. We adopted this January eighth of twenty twenty. Right. Right before, like we. Before. Yeah. No. Right no, after last year. Last year. Yeah. Right. So the the only the only thing that's being added in here is the piece that. Ties it back to. Right. I keep forgetting it's uh, 19 or 20 because it's the 19 20 school year. Right. I, 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 my time right. is all like. But it was two months weird. before. Yeah, you know, right. know, we flattened the curve. <laughs> <laughs> this Sorry. one, like it says, some it's conducting mock elections, but we can still do that. Mm -hmm. They do the mocks. 
the what are you looking at that? that the new nothing in this policy is to be constructed as precluding discussion of contentious viewpoints, including discrimination in current events or historical context, or conducting mock election right. debates. Right. right. I mean, we have that big election class every year with the president, or every four years with the presidential election. And again, that's all incredibly neutral, right? The whole purpose of that is the kids learn how the process works, they learn how to think about how opposing views work. The kids simulate by role-playing both presidential candidates and they debate that. And that's exactly the purpose of that so that they can learn how the process works and what the different sides value as priorities, right? Which is exactly what we would want. Any questions or discussion? I actually always say to teachers, it's the one time that it's okay to have a presidential sign up in your classroom because Mr. Hurley will always have both of the, <laughs> both, of the both of the signs up because that's the whole purpose of the course, you know. So we would have to we'd have to review and approve both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can move in. Well, we have a GBI, right? But I would say just send them both. Let's just get it done. Okay. For first read. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. the academic freedom policy yes ready for to move to the board for first read? I think we were just going to clarify. Well, I think we kind of did clarify the accurate because down below it specifies facts and how how they're. And it's only going for part three, so if there is more discussion, there will be. I'm sure. IGE isn't in. Well, so IGE is also referenced, yes. and, that, and that's also in your folder for policies that having to be reviewed, right? Yep. So just keep that in mind that. GBI references that as well. There are so many interconnected ones. We'll yeah. catch them all eventually. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move that we have this motion to bring um, IB and GBI to the board for first read. Second. Okay. All in favor? We have 11 minutes. So the next one is JICC-R, School Bus Conduct Rules. JICC to Ray. JICC is the overarching and the dash R is usually the... Yeah, do you want to look at the JICC first maybe because... Okay. Then R will be the, the more detailed okay. version. Okay. okay, so would we like to move to JICC? Okay. So these are new policies? We don't have a policy that... Conduct already. It looks like not a policy. We have procedures and handbooks, but not a, an actual policy. And it looks like this is the to remove EEAEC, which would be a redundant policy. Which what, what's the code of that? I don't know. It just says including the withdrawal of redundant sample policy EEAEC and adopting the revisions to JICC. District should assure that they withdraw the EEAEC because policy can be found in handbook procedures and other documents. All right, I stand corrected. So we do have an EEAEC. What's the E code again? I have to look. I 
know we have. Questions. E is support yeah. services. So they're moving it from. So the first thing is they're moving it from support services to J, which is students. So that makes sense. Right. That That's make fine. Sense. Also, just so everyone knows, the admins have read all of these before they come to you, so they're okay right. with it, mm -hmm. right? That's the process that I, that's why I was saying that we need to slow down on that other one, because I just needed time for everybody to read it mm -hmm. before when I got it. So it was... Which one seemed fine to me. I didn't yeah. know when I wrote it. Yeah. I think that's well. I felt like it was pretty straightforward. Yeah. I put a note in for the EEA EC policy that will need to be withdrawn so Phyllis can do that. Yeah. yeah and um, when you make the motion, if you can make the motion to adopt JICC and withdraw EEA EC, yeah. that'll just go on the agenda, right? It'll be that way. to bring JICC to the board and renew and withdraw EEAEC uh, from the policy manual. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? We have seven minutes. I don't know if we you could do JICCR and then we can take a quick break to the party before we get to the okay. if you feel like it's good. If you need more time, we can do it next time. I didn't have any issues with it, but I don't know if I had any either. Yeah. Okay. There were some references to I guess we have some discretion on how we some of these in yellow schools differ greatly on this particular rule and the toilet about refraining from eating and drinking and modifies appropriate so modify yeah and we we, we so don't want the meeting and drinking on the bus so we're i think we should stay there well they're currently masks anyway so. right right but but if this is for like longer time you might not look at this for three years mm -hmm. unless there's a problem number 14 says modify as needed uh, if there's different if the rules yeah. differ blah 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 or sign buses And 17, students will be expected to sit no more than three passengers to a seat. That's right. I would think that would be. A well, it's the elementary. The little kids, it's three. Yeah. They'll put three in a, in a well, row. You can, I mean, even in elementary, if you want more than that? No, no. Yeah, I think that's no. the, that, that's for the kids that pile on right. in one seat. It's, it's, yeah, I remember when yeah. we were kids, we used to try to do that, and they'd be like, nah, you're not doing that. I would, yeah, I, mean, I certainly agree with number 17. <laughs> um, there's just a note there about whatever yeah. implementation is of this rule and who's going to do it. You know, yeah. Stack had asked the question and I had answered. Yeah, that's so why I just saw one. Yeah. yeah. Getting insight into our processes. Looks like Troy asked a question about can we simply say retention, but not limited to? Yep, we can do that. Close up in one hour detention because it says after school. So maybe because it could be lunch recess. Thanks, Betty. Nice. That one. What's the new language now? Don't call it detention anymore. Policy has a different name for it. You'll have to take out the after school or after an extra one hour. Troy, Troy really went and read this carefully because he's trying to fix the buses at Bayview. There's some problems. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. he was really thinking about it. And, and really this policy, if you're a high school kid and you're being a pain in the butt on the bus, you're not riding the bus. Mm -hmm. okay, for the little kids, they have to figure out what to do because parents need to go to work. So yeah. far bigger issue. It's yeah, yeah it's it's right definitely for sure. Sure. The only question I do have um, in rereading this with the number 14, um, students may ride only the bus that they have been assigned and students may only board or exit the bus to assign stop. Obviously, they're not supposed to get off the bus on district. They don't have permission to get off. Uh, it says exceptions will only be made with a note from principal or principal designated. What if you have a child care issue and you need to send your child to another stop? Oh, oh no, that's that. fine. The, the okay. principal has to be the one that tells the bus. Okay, it that's can't, fine. What it can't I Because when you the, read that... Yeah, my elementary like, principal alarms are going... Whoop, whoop, because right. I did this for a long time. And right. if the kid says that we would have kids get on the bus, the bus takes off and the kid says, I gotta get off at Johnny's stop. And the bus driver's like, no, you're not. Right. Because right. at that point, they're in parentis loco. They're the guardian of that kid. Mm -hmm. And if they drop them off at Johnny's bus stop without a note from the parent, there's trouble. What so when it says students may ride only the bus that they've been assigned, so that means if a parent puts in a change of dismissal or something that's like that. The, the that's part the part parentheses covers that. Yeah. Okay. Exceptions will only sure. be made with a note from the principal so like or the principal's designee. Right. Well, and that's where, because it, it says principal or principal's designee, so if that's parent, that's fine. Yeah. No, normally, the principal's designee is, would be like the secretary. Okay. Would bring fine. the note out. I just want right. to make sure that this doesn't read it's, as parents can't change their kids' bus stops. Right. right. They can. And it's like, more of an issue at the K through eight level. Honestly, right. it doesn't come up at the high school right. level just because kids are more independent. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's really the bigger yeah. thing with that. Yeah. So should we say for grades K through eight, students may ride only the bus? Probably makes sense because I don't know that it's applicable nine through 12. Well, but- It's helpful. Uh, it, yeah, because I mean, not for nothing, but if you don't say nine through 12, you're gonna have kids like my kid, it's going to be like, well, I can take whatever bus I want. Okay. Even though All right. Yeah, that's, why, that's why I didn't, I didn't make a note. Right. I didn't. Yes, yeah, I know. I know. But I don't, oh, we've got to go. It's 5.58. Yeah. yeah. So. And I don't want Pete Broderick not to be. Do we want. Because he's going to want to start on time. Do we want to table this to one more meeting? No, I think, I think now that there's been clarification, I think I, I'm okay with that. I just want to say that. Yeah. Okay. okay. We have a motion to move to first read. Yeah. Um, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? 